Hey guys, it's been a while since I posted on this channel and today I want to be talking about this particular lens which is the E-Series 35-100mm. to mm. Now I just want to clarify a couple of things which I don't think a lot of reviewers cover. Now this lens at the 35N is supposed to be a f-stop 2.8 and at the long range of 100mm is supposed to be a f4.0. So you, as you can imagine, between 35 and 100 zoom range, you're going to get a variable aperture. It's not a fixed aperture lens but what you may not know is the focal length at which the f-stop drops all right so today i'm gonna cover that and i'm gonna give you very quickly up front in this video before i ramble on towards the rest of the video and i do tend to talk a lot now at 35 mm of course as advertised they have to put it at f 2.8 but do you know when it actually goes one third of a stop tighter into f 3.2 from f 2.8 just a touch of the barrel right the moment you hit 37 mm is actually gonna hit 3.2 f 3.2 that is actually pretty quick right so at which focal point does it reach f 3.5 and that will be at 55 the moment you hit 55 on your zoom range you're gonna hit 3.5 right so this is still gonna sound very impressive already and when are you gonna hit f 4.0 most of you will think that okay you will hit 4.0 when it reaches 100 mm but that is not the case you actually hit 4.0 f 4.0 at 73 mm so there you have it very quickly 35 mm it touches f 2.8 37mm, it touches f3.2, 55 it goes to 3.5, and 73mm, it actually hits 4.0. So, it is not as linear as you would have thought it would be, because otherwise, at 75mm or so, you would think that it may still be a 3.2 or 3.5, but that's not the case. So, the lens does actually stop down the aperture quite quickly. You're not going to get 100mm before it reaches f4.0. Now, that being said, right, let's talk about this lens. What it gives you is versatility. Now, if you're new to the Hasselblad system and you have not owned any lens before, and let's say you're picking up this new X2D Mark II, so the first lens you're going to get, unless you are very, very confirmed and very sure about the kind of photography you're going to get uh, get into, right? whether you're going to get wide street shots using a 25mm or a 38mm for more... Um, whole body portrait shoots or you want to go a little bit more medium zoom range at 55 maybe even touching the 75 mm or you want to go all the way to the 90 all these prime lenses are great prime lenses either you get them from the p series or from the v series they are all great lenses but what happens is that you have to keep swapping the lens out but this lens here the 35 to 100 actually gives you the versatility and you don't ever have to swap lens and you don't even have to buy different lenses to try out the various focal lengths that this camera is able to give you now if you are a general photographer you use your camera all over the place don't let the f-stop stop you don't let the f-stop stop you right don't let it scare you away right when i say that it hits 3.2 at 37 mm so what right most of the time you want to stop down a little bit anyway to get a little bit more sharpness in your photos and maybe you don't even need that much light and maybe you want to get more things in focus and you want the depth of field to be really wide right so sometimes when i'm shooting things i want to show things on the screen or what's available behind me i do want to actually make the background not so blur right so so that requires a smaller aperture which is achieved by going to 5.6 7.1 it really doesn't matter right so if you're a landscape photographer the whole f-stop doesn't really matter maybe if you are an astro photographer you want as much light as possible into your lens yeah then get one of the prime lenses but what this 35 to 100 e is suitable for is a general walk around now when i say general walk around i mean look this is quite big right if you look at the whole lens set up here i'm holding in my hand with my arm outstretched it is actually causing quite a bit of a strain on your arms now you're gonna walk around with this the good thing is you don't have to keep swapping lenses the bad thing is well it is heavy and if you are only going to be using the 35 mm for example uh, most of the time you're carrying the other focal length with you and carrying the weight penalty with you all the time you know even if you're not using them 
which you know brings me to this iPhone Air that I have here. Now I have an iPhone Air in my hands. This phone has only one camera at the back and it's the equivalent of a 26 millimeter camera. Now it is not that I don't use the ultra wide, it is not that I don't use the zoom, but the freaking weight of this, the size of this, the feel of this phone, the iPhone Air in my hands is so good. I actually think I will do away with all those zoom lenses because I don't want to carry the penalty of the extra ultra wide and the extra zoom lens with me all the time. That's 100% of the time when I don't even use it 100% of the time. Which brings me to the other camera that I have here. So this is the 907X 100C, right? This is now paired with a 38mm V lens. Now, if you look at this combination here, very tiny, very small combination. The shooting is a pleasure. This thing is a beauty. Now, look at me hold this in one hand and then look at me hold this combination in the other hand, right? One of them, you're going to be a lot more discreet when you're photographing around. And this one, you know, the moment you pull this out, everybody expects you to take photos of them. And then you're going to say, oh, maybe this is not wide enough. Oh, maybe I cannot reach there. Oh, maybe I don't have the app stop. This, nobody gives a shit, right? You take it, it looks like a toy camera. Well, it doesn't look like a toy camera. It looks like a piece of art, right? Much like the iPhone Air that I have here. So if you're the kind of person who values an iPhone Air, then maybe this combination is the one that will give you the best bang for your money. If you are the kind who wants the iPhone 17 Pro Max because of all the lenses that it gives you, then yeah, maybe the 3500E is the sort of lens that you want to use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so that's it for today's episode and I will see you around in one of my other episodes. In my coming episode, I'm going to make a trip. I'm going to drive my way all the way from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur and up to Genting Highlands and uh, I'll probably bring this camera along. Now, this camera is very underused. This lens is really underused so I do want to see what I can capture out of this and I'll tell you how underused is, uh, this camera is, right? Look at the rear of this. Now, look at this tab here. I have not even taken away the screen protector that is on the camera when it's delivered. That's how underused this camera is. I'm going to be bringing it around and uh, stay tuned. I'll catch you in one of my other videos.